that Party Poker World Open is back at the Palm Beach Casino in London. And tonight we fill the first seat at our prestigious final table. With a $200,000 top prize, there's plenty to play for, but it's not just about the money. It's about beating the very best. And with one of the strongest fields that we've ever assembled for this tournament, whoever is crowned the World Open champion will be deserving of the accolade. It was an exciting start last time out, so let's remind ourselves of the players, the action, and their stacks. I just want to show Dale that even though he hurt me, I still love him. There's a lot of love in this room. I can take the pain. I've been gambling long enough that I like, I like the pain in a sick way, you know? I can never be as stylish as you when I put the chips in. I show you. <laughs> wow! That's brutal. He's been crushed! Play your games, Johnny boy. You can have your little games. I knew you were about that. Not too bad. It's such a sick man. Have a Dubai. Easy game, easy game. It looks like Phil played that like a genius. A super genius. <laughs> An uber genius. Uber genius. Look at this. Yeah. Can you can we get a close up on this? Look at that. Can you see that? Doesn't that look really, really, really inviting? Look at that. How'd you like the apple pie? I'm sorry, they have to be x-ray glasses. He has voices in his head that are just like telling him what to do and he's just making every right move today. That's the technique I use. I'm a dinosaur. Action heat and Philip Gruesome nearly double his starting stack. Phil Locke has done the most with what he's got. But five of these players under their starting stack of 300K. Players have taken a break and come back feeling refreshed. Phil Locke is still in flying form. And Sorrell, I mean, these eight players, someone's got to go. No it, the players have been very strong thus far, that's for sure. I, I would assume at this point there'd be at least two players out, but everyone's still in, everyone's hanging tough, but I, I feel like there's going to be some, uh, at least one elimination this round uh, with, with Huck having 17 big blinds and, and Tabby having 15. Um, you know, the stacks are getting shorter, they're getting less big blinds as, big, as the blinds go up. That's even funnier that his name is Dubai. It's again like been dealt a real hand. Pocket <laughs> like <laughs> Nice time. <laughs> well, well, a lot of people look at this as sort of a celebratory raise here. You know, like, uh, well, he won the last pot. I mean, Philip. You didn't see my card either. No. This is. Start? I started 177. This is a really. And I lost 15 in blinds. I mean, is it an obvious yeah, spot for Philip just to shove here? Yeah, I mean, he's got 177. I got well, one, he's got two eight. people behind him. It looks like one, and both of them have uh, about. Well, they have around under 20 big blinds. I'm all so in. So I, I, I think shoving is fine. All in. Oh wow. my! Tabby has woken up with a monster. Two kings. I'm all in. He's woken up on the right side of the bed this morning is what's happened. And Huck is like, his eyes have just opened wide. I think it's like around 150. Well, hell, one of them, I mean, this is my shot here to get some chips. I mean, Huck should love his spot here. I mean, even though there's been a re-raise, I mean, pocket queens in this spot is golden. Yeah. Okay, it's king, it's king. Okay. And, and Tabby, nah. because he knows Philip, because he knows Huck, Everyone's jacks, only? tens, oh, yeah. nines, oh. ace, queen, and all oh those. God. All those are in he, his he, range. Okay. For sure. And now he's he's in a three way all in pot. If Tabby holds up here, he's going to be he's gonna be the new chip leader. Yeah, I've been cultivating. So I'm going to be. That's so sick. Two kings like in a spot like that. I thought you had like an ace, queen. I mean, that's ridiculous. What was, your, what was your bottom of your range there? Kings? <laughs> <laughs> I believe there's a side pot here between Philip yeah, and Huck. So effectively, Huck just needs to outrun the threes and he'll still be in this. And Tabby needs to outrun both of them. Philip's not feeling very good right now. But there's four, four big game changers in the deck. That's just really unlucky for Philip. I mean, Huck's, Huck's opening a really wide range there. Uh, I, I like Philip's Reese shove. It's just really unlucky that he had, that Huck ended up waking up with queens and that Tabby ended up uh, 
uh, waking up with a big hand as well. So how do you one, five, it six? It holds. That was a cooler. I just and for John to buy, to buy, I mean, forget about the first couple levels. I never figured him for a comeback kid. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Gruesome, whose stack has been decimated pretty much here, he will be saying to himself, standard, right? I mean, he knows, as you said, he plays this high variance type of game here. There's eight guys left. You gotta feel bad for the guy for making a great, you know, a standard play and, uh, and just getting unlucky that both players had the top of their, or Huck had the top of his range. Now, just so we realize, we are still eight-handed, amazingly, because Tavi tripled up, and Huck, Huck's actually game. not in hard. I mean, obviously, you know, he, he ran the queens hand. into the kings, and he still got ten big blinds. It was a straight. And made Gruesome's it. actually, uh, yeah, he's well, actually yeah, he still straight. got an average stack. One second place I didn't realize right. that. Amazing, Huggy Bear just goes from like the lowest stack to the chip leader, just just in one hand, triples up. Mercer's picked up pocket jacks. Let's hope uh, she doesn't release these ones. Well, she's made it 23, and because of we saw what happened to her against Phil Locke earlier, you kind of feel like she should be making larger raises. Do you agree with that? Just because of her game style, make the decisions a little easier on the flop? Or Well, the other one was a re-raise pot, and she made a very small re-raise, but this time she's just opening, and I don't mind her opening, uh, you know, 2.3x the big blind with a hand like pocket jacks. Well, great situation for Heather Mercer. I mean, kind of surprised the chips don't go in. Gray probably has the very tight image of Heather's range here, but he's he's not getting away, I don't think. Again, I'm just super shocked that we're seeing the hands we're seeing and there hasn't been a lot of pre-flop aggression. I mean, it's a clear shove for Jason Gray, even against someone like Heather Mercier. There's 60 odd in the pot and she's on 160. So no matter how she decides to bet this, she could just bet it twice. She, she can get her stack in. Right, I think what's, what's probably gonna happen is Heather's gonna make a small bet. Jason's probably gonna shove, I oh, mean. Right. Even with, with Heather's tight image, I mean, pocket tens on this board, with with that few chips, I just don't think Jason can possibly get away from this hand. Prepare to eat your words. <laughs> Pretty big bet from, uh, from Heather. Just bet just under the pot. He's gone for it. Well, at least I was right about something. <laughs> Uh, I just don't think Heather's ever going to fold this hand. Right, I mean, even if she thinks about it, she's thinking to herself, geez, what, what actually can I beat if he's really got a hand? But it just doesn't matter, does it? You just sometimes, you just, it doesn't matter. I mean, she's about 55,000. It's 130,000 more to call. She's got an overpair to the board. I mean, it's just impossible to, to lay this down. Right. Hey, don't turn it up John, who do you Can't be scared to go out first. She's going to love when Jason Gray turns over his cards. He's not going to love it. He's only got, he's got about 20, 20 something thousand chips back. But for Heather, she's uh, going to be on the verge of the chip lead. A little tense there still. Two cards to sweat. I think I had 9-5. Oh, my Lord. It'd be too cruel. You know, Jason tried to see a flop that he could get away from, tried to give himself an excuse to get rid of, get away from the hand, but on that kind of board, he just can't go anywhere if he's going to call pre-flop. It looks like Jason's still in, so we still have the eight people. Yeah, yeah just 27,000 left, technically in, but his teeth are still getting pulled. We're still eight-handed here at the Palm Beach Casino in London, so join us after the break for more action from the Party Poker World Open 6. Welcome back to the Palm Beach Casino in London. Nobody wants to be the first player out here for our opening heat of the World Open 6. Let's go back down to the tables and check out the action. Lovely Heather Mercer still stacking her chips up from the last hand. That's a new flavor there, playing off a bigger stack. Others not so lucky. There's more experienced on the left there. 1996 world oh. champion. Just two kings, huh? All six foot, like seven of them? Pass. 
So now we have Huckleberry with uh, 121,000, effectively 12 big blinds. And Jason on the short stack um, with 27,000. So he's basically, I feel like he's getting it in here. Well, I guess there's no anti, so I feel like he could he could definitely wait. But a hand like Ace-10, he's just not going anywhere. Um, unless there's some crazy action behind him. Uh, now, to buy, to buy, um, you kind of expected, just because of who he is, that when he got some chips together, he was definitely going to step it up. But is it actually smart for him to be stepping it up right now? Um, I think it's fine to, to try to steal uh, some pots preflop. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't try to get two out of line, but, you know, ace five in that spot, um, where you only have to call one shove and the shove is only for 5,000 more, is definitely a fine to open. Gray all in and in a great spot, actually, to double up. There's some split pots here and pretty good flop there for the ace 10. Ten's very likely to play at this stage. Oh, look at that. Tab. Oh, turned a lot more outs there with the four. Wow. Good. Sorry, mate. Unlucky. Wow. See you guys. I thought it was like six. Jason Gray <laughs> went quick. Bam, bam. And uh, actually, pretty unlucky for him. So eight has become seven. And John Taba Tabai has become the chip leader. Uh, I've actually seen John Tabatabai play in about five of these. Uh, I've never not seen him have a massive chip lead, and I've never seen him win one, so I don't know. What is this? Does, he, does he said about his luck in this format or something like that? I don't know, but hopefully history doesn't repeat itself. Yeah, everybody's got to break their duck. He is. I'm going to start playing bad. Not that I wasn't already and getting lucky, but... <laughs> Discipline. Oh! Wow, that hurts. See, I noticed that it's my friend's big blind, and he's been crippled with the queen's hand. <coughs> so I just, I, I want him. I want him here. It's exactly 15, just so you know. So it's not, it's not 13 or 39 or any other random number. He's, um, he's had a really tough time, Toby Lewis, uh, sort of stealing blinds. I take a random number there. And here at the front. Oh. And another one. Oh, and Huck's like just onto him. I mean, is this automatic or is Huck onto him? Um, I think against Toby, it, it's a it's an automatic play with an ace and twelve big blinds. Well, I looked at that one. I know. That's why I didn't. That's why I said, "Oh no." I got your. I, was, I always get. I should have known it was ace four. I always get ace four. I mean, I had ace four like four out of six hands. I was like, after he bluffed me, with ace four. Yeah, it was. What is this? A it might come back here? to haunt me. Both of them favorite. looked at one card and raised, <laughs> and right? they ended up with the four against the deuce. <laughs> yeah. Nice play with you guys. Come on, four ball, one time. Queen. Four ball. Ooh. Queen's good. Ten. Wow, Huck's gonna be out. Ten or four. Ten. No, just ten. Ten, chop it up. That's fair. Oh, the pain of the agony of defeat. The ace four got you on all the levels. Who's got the most chips? Well, I'm pretty sure it's Toby. Yeah. You can just sit there and watch if you want. Make sure I don't knock any glass over on my way out. I'm really sad right now. A sore loser. Super dry. I didn't like that. Tab, I didn't like that. champion, champion, world champion, world champion. Well, my cookie fun to watch. Consolation prize, right? I don't see the apple. You know, it's <laughs> nearly it's worth so losing $10,000 to get one of those cookies. That's yeah. actually what Huck's thinking right now. All <laughs> right. Yes. Definitely some equity in the cookie. Oh, that's my for sure. Lord. Next off our table is Huck Seed. It's been kind of an all-action morning out there. I think you guys came back really wanting to uh, to go straight for it. Somebody drank their coffee this morning. Yeah. But it was interesting that uh, last night they put on the internet eight hands, you know. So one of the hands... Uh, Toby had ace four and re raised bluffed me. I had ace eight and I was thinking a long time. I don't know if you remember that hand. I really wanted to go all in with it, but I didn't. At the last second, I changed my mind. And uh, then I got to see on there that he had ace four and I had him beat. And it was kind of funny because right after that hand, I just kept getting ace four every hand and I just kept folding and folding. And it was like a s subtle needle that the cards were giving me. 
And then, of course, I get ace four and go all in against Toby. And he had ace deuce and hit a deuce. So it was all about the ace four. Six ways now with Huxley off to run the five minute mile blinds up to seven and 15,000. And hello. I mean, Taba Taba, if he's getting hit by the deck now, that could make this game ugly in a fun right. way. 35,000 total. You know what's going to happen if you call, by the way? You know Toby's going to crab McAfee us. Phil, what are you doing? You. Phil, what are you doing? I'm crab McAfee in this situation. I thought we were friends. Not in this hand. It's wow. 102. This hand I declared This war. might be Phil Locke's first misstep of the entire tournament. But maybe he'll get away with it, you know? You know like... I open under the gun, right? And straight oh away, you raise me. That's under the gun without even the plus one. That's just straight out under the gun, right? I, I'm, a, I'm a legit utke. <laughs> well, Tabby maybe, cannot call here. Right? Maybe, you never know. I mean, everything has worked out for Phil thus far, so it wouldn't surprise me if somehow Tab called and then got outplayed post-flop. But it would be a major mistake for him to call in this spot, right? It would be. And I think, I think what's going to happen is Tab's going to shove, Phil Locke's going to talk about how great his hand is, and then end up folding. The pot would be too big in relation to the stacks to justify trying to play this ace-king after the flop, even if Absolutely. the guy's got... Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just think, I mean, he, he would be calling off a huge percent of his stack um, with Ace King, and it's just the perfect spot to shove. I'm all in. All in. Once again, I should have just called. That's kind of painful. Uh, let's see, I might just give you my money. Wow, you're just being mean to me, huh? 250. What at two to one would he be? Would he have to call the king nine against the range of Tabatabi's shove, or <coughs> is it? Does he need better? Well, I don't think he'd ever get in, into a spot where, by re-raising, he would be getting two to one on a call to, of a shove. Um, he knows that by re-raising, you know, he's only committing 25 percent of his stack. And he can easily get away with it. But given two to one odds, he definitely has. Uh, it's definitely more likely that he's going to be calling. Um, it's just players like as good as Phil aren't aren't really going to get themselves in those spots very often. They're going to know, okay, well if I re-raise here. I have to call, so I'm not going to re-raise here to begin with. I mean, the math is so ridiculous here. There's six, it's 500 to win 600. I mean, it's right. like, I mean, it's like, yeah. it's not even like, there is no math here. It's I mean, not close. It's not close. <laughs> can we see what the flop was? Marty, can we see what the flop was with John's permission? John, can we see I, the flop? Yeah, of course. I can we see the flop pretty please? I just want to see if I was going to connect. It's good for people at home. You can see the flop. Wait, wait, wait. One if time. you see the flop, what do you, what do you want to see on the flop? Though? That's what I want to know. Diamonds! <laughs> Is that it? Or local, what, what kind of cards? Diamonds! Okay, fine, show them, show them. Okay, just see the flop. Please come diamonds. <coughs> Give me some diamonds. Please come diamonds. Don't do it. Yes! Oh my god. <laughs> 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 that might tell Phil now, for the rest of the time. Now, that is very funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is very funny. He would have actually been... He would have been just such By a big way, favorite. It's not even. Also make a bet. What yeah. kind of favorite would he have been? Well, for me to win the I think he would have been like a 65% <laughs> favorite, maybe a little less. I mean, John would still have the best hand on the flop. Right. But um. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, looks completely are. dejected. I mean, that flop was just about as perfect as it could get for my hand. Phil is regretting not calling with his king nine. I don't see how I could win that. That's what pain feels like, huh? <laughs> yeah, to buy, to buy is the ghost of Christmas future, Phil. Now. That's no, why you don't race. ask to man. see it. Let's go. It's all I good. mean, I it can never be a good World thing. Never. And Tabat Tabat is loving it. You know it's like mojo show. for his battle with Locke, <laughs> which at this point, let's face it, this is the major battle going on at this table. Victory for one of them is through the other. Now, Phillip's on a small blind here with pocket sixes. And 21 big blinds, or 22 almost. I think a lot of players would just shove here, but against a, a, a loose player like, like John Tabatabai, I think he, he might raise to induce a shove, but I definitely, 
he's definitely not folding under any circumstances pre-flop. And or blind on blind. And he shouldn't. Wow. Echo. And this is Echo. this is oh just God. a standard some, this spot, you, you know, like pocket happening? sixes is raising to call he's a shove, and Tabby ends up. Uh, he's raising for value. And yeah. Sixes. This is what they call a race. And it's a massive a swing in the, well. in the future of this yeah. tournament way, because whichever one of the guys so wins this pot, in my mind, in is going to go watch, watch the favorite here. Straight out. Tabat Tabai will have nearly a million, and Grusin will be out if he wins. If not. Wow, ace right on the flop. <laughs> That's my hugs. Must be nice to be to buy to buy if the eight, if the six don't come. And for Philip Grusom, fifth place or sixth place even probably doesn't accurately reflect how he played, which is pretty darn good, right? I agree 100%. I mean, he got involved in two hands. The two major hands that he played uh, was when he had the pocket threes and he, he made a very standard play. And the second one was uh, pocket sixes in a blind on blind war with uh, 20 big blinds effective. It's just, like you, you can't do anything like in those spots. Well, the pressure of the blinds ended this in one of those classic race situations for you. Overall though, how do you feel about your game yesterday and today? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my game. Uh, I started slowly and then made some moves. Every move uh, worked out and in the end there are some flips you have to win, but uh, I was pretty happy the way it went on the first day, and uh, yeah, nothing yeah. I can do. Nothing you can do. It seemed like quite an entertaining table out there. Lots of banter on the table, yeah? <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of uh, talking going on. I was a little bit tired today. Yesterday <laughs> it was more fun. Uh, I would really love to play uh, the whole day with these guys. Okay. Well, well, something, something is five left. Of, uh, like a dinner party, isn't better, it? Right? You have this great evening, so and then all of a sudden someone middle, okay. gets so drunk and they have to go. Better, and we both put yeah. down five like, here, and to buy to buy now, full of beans. <laughs> I mean, who would have thought of that <laughs> when this thing Save started money, out? Yeah. And he was you wrecked early on in that early hand against Dale Hoy. Oh God, it's just the thing where I can never win. It's one of these paradigms. You know, Locke doesn't even listen to himself. He's limped in here. No, the bench you'll just look at a flop, right? Oh, no, you're persistent. Aren't I'm you? persistent. Well, it only costs one unit. What okay. am I? I'm all in. I call. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Woo! Yeah. Wow. Phil has set the trap. I got that beat. Is completely oh! dominating Toby Lewis in this hand. Yeah. He got him. He finally oh, got on, him, you know? Come on for Philly Boy, please, one time. Or maybe not. Give me the pain. I guess I'm okay either way. No queen is going to do it. Is he going to do it? Don't do it. Is he doing it? Did he do it? He hasn't done it yet. Okay. He insta called too. Phil, you make me proud, sir. The you like dinosaur. You like <laughs> the dinosaurs this? used to rule the okay. earth. I'm ready. Oh, it's the other way. <gasps> He's not going to like that. Wow. That's hurt. He did it to me. Now I need a jack, I guess. Jack or, or an ace. ace? Jack. Or we lose Phil. Wow, that's harsh, man. Uh, not yet. <laughs> that's <laughs> harsh. Defending champion. Well done. Down. All those chips just gone. Oh, it's hurt. That hurts. Phil Lock has just probably finished uh, the best session of boys. poker of his entire career. Right? <laughs> right. I mean, right. I mean, if he Thank ever plays a series of hands that good again, uh, you know. <laughs> yep. Oh, I felt like I had the best of it there. It's, it's just like not fair, you know. Of course, he comes fifth. <laughs> it's just not fair. He played. Uh, he played great. Okay, I'm gonna rebuy. I'm rebuying. Get, Marty, give me some chips. I'm rebuying. Come on, you can't send me away. Please, give me some chips. The poker gods have decided to give someone else a crack at the World Open title as our returning champion is out. You had a dominating hand there. It's got to feel that a little painful. I, no, it wasn't painful at all. Uh, it was actually quite exciting. I pegged Toby as a very patterned player, and if I limped in the small blind, he was super consistent with his all-in bet, which I thought is a huge blunder because unless he uh, answers a little variation into that play, it's very exploitable. And so I decided to limp consistently with even cards I would normally fold, jack, deuce, I didn't care what I had. I would limp because I knew eventually I would have a hand that I could snap call with. And, uh, and I would have stopped limping with rag hands if he 
called or mm -hmm. didn't go on. But since she was, he was being so incredibly consistent, I was like, wow, what an opportunity. I hope this maintains. And often in gambling, you don't get super luxury spots like that. So I'm very delighted to have gotten that spot because those spots add up to uh, a yearly salary playing cards. Well, thank you very much. Okay, I'll admit it. So I'm dying inside. You guys want to hear it. They always get the cameras. They line you up right afterwards. They want to see the pain. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you really wanted to see the pain, you had to be in the hospital when they were stitching oh. me up after the accident. That's Nothing else would be as painful. Yeah, no. it was like whatever. I'm like, you know, so it's all good. Well, four-handed now, and Toby Lewis is taking the chip lead, Sorrell. And, you know, him and Taba Tabai, the other two are going to have their work cut out to, to get to them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're the two overwhelming and chip leaders. But then again, myself. all it takes is one double up from one of the, of the chip leaders to even like, things out again. You know, I'm, I'm it's okay, still anyone's game there, at this point. Well, well you say that, but what Dale and Heather have to do is they have to make sure the 300 doesn't become 200 before they get it all in. You know? right. And that's a big danger. Plenty. Pursue. That's a pretty big hand to have on the button with her stack. I almost don't mind raising to induce, but all in is perfectly fine as well. Come count, count, please. Is it a real decision or is he just fooling around? Pocket sixes is going to be tough to fold, even with uh, with Heather's great image. Pocket sixes is so strong to a, a button shove. I, I don't think I would fold in this spot. Make That's an it. argument for folding. Well, I guess the argument is that, you know, you know that Mercer's not going to show up with junk. You know, it's, I just don't think she's going to have uh, an undercard very often. Um, but she could have, there's every pair is in her yeah. range. And a call. You know, I guess ace four, ace five type of hands are in her range. Um, and Toby's just, I guess everything's just going so well for him. He doesn't need to necessarily call, but I just think two sixes is just way too strong. Looks like he's made the call. Good luck. Yeah, Heather Sue is all in. Great spot for her if she can hit. If she can't hit, out. it's the last spot for her. Another out. <laughs> it's true. Seven, eight, nine, or ace. Wow. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> for Heather Sue. Thank you. She's a lot of fun to watch on the table, and she may really brighten this atmosphere and a race away from being like among the chip lead. Right. It's a shame. She leaves, and the cookies leave with her. And another scalp for Toby Lewis. He takes the chip lead, but then again, lately he's used to that. We first heard about Toby Lewis when you won EPT Villamora not very long ago, but obviously you've been in poker for a while. You've been working at this for a little while. Yeah, I uh, I started a few years ago, just like playing playing small tournaments and small cash games, and like won a little bit here and there, and jumped up another level, and won a bit here and there, and jumped up a level again, and worked out right so far. So. Yeah, they always say it looks like it, you know, people make it look so easy, and you kind of all of a sudden have a big win, but there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. Yeah, a lot of hard work. I mean, I started playing uh, like three and a half years ago, and as soon like. Maybe there was like six months where I played like every now and again and then after that I played like every day for like two years just sitting on my computer just playing and playing and playing and eventually you do get a lot better and well now it's now life's a little bit better. I'll say it definitely is paying off and it must be really nice since you're spending so much time playing poker and thinking about poker and making yourself better to have lots of friends who are also in that same position. Yeah we've got a great bunch of lads yeah. uh, at the moment from the, from the British perspective. Um, so it's really cool to like go around and travel to these places like we're, a lot of the places we go are like quite far away so uh, if you can travel with your friends and then go out and have drinks and do other stuff as well it sort of mixes it up nicely rather than just being poker. You're the only crazy loon here that puts 30k in or 60k in without a hand. That's the fun part though. No. John you've me, done much me bigger bluffs do than me. Me and Dale aren't into that. We're playing a nice straight well, game. Tobi Tobi John, has uh, to turned his attention to Toby <laughs> Lewis, but why, uh, why have you turned into a Dale must now? be like the third oh, wheel. Oh, oh no! All I gotta do is just squeeze one out. Here he goes. Sounded pretty. Yeah. <laughs> How much is that? I'm uh, ninety percent to call, just so you know. But I'm not slow running. I'm ninety percent. I just, I just want to make sure this is not like seven hundred or something crazy. <laughs> 
I made that mistake. I think, I think the, Tabby's gonna call. We can't. No, I called. Call. Yeah, that's. Call. He's gonna have. Eight. He's gonna be in great eight. shape here, <gasps> dominating yeah, Hoyas ten eights. And. Well, Slavery Dale's a little disappointed defense. now, but nah, he's done the absolute right thing. He's and he's unlucky not to get Fight called, but unlucky to be dominated here. Favorite. That's my favorite. Yeah, I mean, eight. I mean, he's, he's unlucky to get called in the first place. I mean, Tabby has to have one of those hands. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. No king. Club for a sweat. No club. Club for a sweat. Nine of clubs is a nice sweat. I like yeah, that. nine of clubs. I'll take the nine of clubs. Yeah. That'll be nice. Nine of clubs. Oh. That's the worst That's a sweat card I've ever seen. That's a terrible card. Yeah. Joe Spice. Just throw the ace out there, make it easy. Joe Spice. He's watching on the TV. Ooh. That'll do. <laughs> See, that would have been a good sweat card on the set. Because it would have given him pair out as well. That's going to change the dynamics quite a lot. Because now, it puts Dale and Teba to buy territory, really. Right. It's very. It's a very close game still, though. It's so much easier if you did have 700,000. Yeah. <laughs> Toby Lewis solidly now. Twice as many chips as both Taba Tabai and Hoy. And you know, the big tournament that he won in Portugal recently, he was not a chip leader going into the final table and kind of came up on the outside. This is ominous. Hoy, oh, oh wow. Hoy's raised and Taba Tabai's got ace king. This is going to be, there's no doubt in my mind, it's going to be a one million uh, chip pot. Basically, we're going to be heads up either way. I, I think, uh, I'm not sure. There's not, there's not more than 100,000 between these. Uh, this is such a decisive, such a decisive flip right now. And Taba Tabai was hoping to be in a situation where he was dominating. Hoy was hoping to be in a situation where he was racing. Wow, but when she just did that, I thought that was the flop. Do you know what? I thought it was a flop then, yeah. <laughs> I was just going to go, what? What, 2 8? Yeah, I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> oh! Oh, no. oh he's that was a flop. That's so cruel. That is brutal. Especially. Not that the 8 comes with the ace in the window, right? Right, the ace in the window and the 8 right in the middle. Kind of brutal there. You know what? Come 30 knees, I think 6 out of 6. Great spot for Dale I'm Hoy. Uh, He's doubling up. About five hundred. John may oh, have wow. two or three big blinds Same. left, but it's not going to be more than that. He's doubled up Dale twice, and Ahoy is healthy and hale. It's kind of brutal for Tab, though. He had a million Good chips job. with the closest stack to him being like 500,000, and now he's he's sitting there with two big blinds. Just And I just don't think he did anything wrong. You know, that's just that's how exactly how you said it. It's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. How many? Huh? How many? Uh, a min raise. Uh, I actually, I mean, I know the so, bubble's yeah. not huge, but it does kind of, you know, you get to come back, have another chance in the turbo if you, if you just get second. I well, mean, it's one of those tough decisions. <laughs> Do I get it in now or next? I guess it's now. <laughs> you could both call and try to take me out. I would actually appreciate it, because then if I win, I'm back in the game. I call. Cool. Wow. You can re-raise now. It's okay for you to re-raise. Did he talk these guys into it? This is not a horrible <laughs> spot here. I mean, there's I only one one overcard well. against his queens. So he's in, he's in a really good spot to triple up. <laughs> he said, you know what I have? <laughs> <laughs> and with 240,000, it's just exactly where uh, uh, Dale Hoy was it's just a few hands ago. So, I mean, anything could happen. Luck, now, now I have to come back this way. Good luck, mate. I have to win the hard way. Thank you. I should win this. 80,000, so you can get is out. Is it 80? Oh, wow, this is nice. 240 if you win. Just bring the flop 222 and I can't lose. Well, Tabby. that's not as bad a flop as you might think. Check right, check. but Tabby cannot be happy with that flop. Oh, uh, right, he doesn't know what these guys have. He has no idea, and, you know, <laughs> he he doesn't feel good about it, that's for sure. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> <laughs> Little does he know, that's a perfect flop for him. It absolutely is. The hand. only card that uh, can beat him right now is the ace. Two right. diamonds. Oh, yes, I won. Well, that's that's a good run out for him on the turn in the river. The turn in the river oh basically. Oh, my God. Nothing, so. <laughs> yeah, but look at that fluff. Of course I'm going to be tilted on that fluff. <laughs> right. Did you have a spade by Toby? Wow. Yes, this is how you win tournaments. You were in six, check. This is how you win Even tournaments. 
all the talk about yeah, the like British Tobai. young guns. Tobai Tobai was the pioneer of that <laughs> generation. There has been actually a massive boom in British poker, and I'm, I, I don't know how it's happened. It's like pretty random. It's just this year in the World Series, you know, James Dempsey went and won a bracelet, and Prez, who's, you know, you could now call him, I guess, a veteran of British poker, although he's a young kid, he's now won two bracelets. And you've got, you know, JP Kelly and James Aikenhead and James Mitchell and Toby Lewis and Jay Cody. The list, goes, the list just goes on and on and on. It's got to a point where everybody realized that in the Scandinavian countries that they actually help each other. They tell each other hands, they play together and they support each other and they stake each other to get better. Whereas in Britain, I think before, maybe because of the British culture, everybody was more conservative, more reserved. And for them, like, they would talk, they'd go out and party they always wanted to be better than one another so they wouldn't share each other's secrets. And I guess eventually, you know, the younger people who weren't brought up in that culture, who weren't brought up in that wrong, tainted mindset, really like, you know, just said, well, why don't we help each other? We're supposed to be friends. And that's why you can see in that like much younger age group, like the 20, 21 year olds, they're doing so well because they're learning at a lot quicker rate, at a more accelerated rate than um, the older pros. In terms of poker, like how to get advice or how to improve, very simple. You play with the best, you lose your money, you learn. You keep playing with the best and you, you the, the only way you're going to learn is by playing better people. You need to lose your ego, understand who's better and why they're better and learn from them. That's the best advice really. You're not going to learn by talking to people who play lower, lower stakes than you or they or the people that you don't really respect. You have to always speak with the best, learn from them and listen. Three is a crowd here at the Party Poker World Open 6, but only two can continue on in our tournament. So join us after the break to see who that will be here at the Palm Beach Casino in London. Welcome back. How about that Dale Hoy, the chip lead three ways. The first time he ever played in this World Open was like the first time he ever played poker. He ended up passing the second nut flush by accident. This is a clear shove for Dale. 295. 295. You can just say all in, it'll be the same effect. You still what to do, John. Oh, okay. I'm all in. I appreciate it. All in. I'm going to have a look. I cannot wait to, to call. Oh, I genuinely don't know now. <laughs> you must have a king. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is a really... I mean, we were saying that king seven would be a call with like 220, but king six with 255, it's really close, but I don't think I'm folding. I did not think I'm folding a king heads up. I know it's quite a big blind. He's a crab. I call. And I call. It is a call. And he's not going to be happy about it. Not yet. Not now. That's but normal. But I can hit the six. You hit your ten, I can hit my six. <laughs> Toy totally deserve it. He's an optimist. Huh? Totally deserve it. buy all in. Oh, he's saying all's fair. We'll see. Oh. Now it's a bit harder. Yeah, blue. Five of it's diamonds. not a good flop. Look for the blue. For Take the five of diamonds. Blue for a sweat. Blue. And it's Bonsoir. Bonsoir. John, good game. Oh, it's nice playing you, mate. As always, a fine performance for John Tabat to buy an entertaining performance and well played, huh? It's marvelous. Fuck it up. We've lost John Tabat to buy, who seems remarkably in good spirits. It's so frustrating to go out on the bubble, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. But I'm getting used to it more and more these <laughs> days. So, actually. The last six of these TV tournaments I've played, I've come third in. And then last year in the World Series, oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. But yeah, it's very frustrating. <laughs> it's okay, you're not telling bad beat stories, no, no. you're allowed here. It's, it's, very, it's like the next thing, even though I've banned myself from telling bad beat stories, uh -huh. it's the next thing to say, oh, this situation was unlucky. So yeah, but either way, I played, I had a great time. It was some cool characters on the table. It's just very annoying to come third again. <laughs> but c'est la vie. Head to head now, what a story. Toby Lewis, the man on a roll, has played clinical. But for Dale Hoy, little madman at the beginning, good poker in the middle, he's now the chip leader. Throw the stats out the window. Dale wants this bad, and he's gonna beat one of the most informed players in the British scene to do it. 
Not easy. And not when he's picking up cards like this. I mean, it's not like Dale's an amateur. You know, he's, he's played about, I don't know, 10 tournaments in this format. He made the money. World Series of Poker main event. But Toby Lewis is one of those machines. Poker's his nuts and bolts. He's comfortable right now. He's getting Hoy to call here with 10-3. You know, some people are just so eager to call when it's only like half price that they just call with these hands. And I don't know. I mean, I think it's great that, that Toby is making these small raises and, and getting Hoy to play all these pots out of position against them. I mean, you talk about the trends in poker. You know, Gus Hansen basically changed the poker world by saying, you know, you get three to one, you're in. I mean, on the big blind, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I read his book, actually, and I have to say that I did change my, my strategy a lot after reading it uh, in terms of defending from the big blind. Um, but at the same time, you know, when you're, they're just simply not deep enough uh, to be calling too many raises at a position. I see. So that's, that is, that's the key factor, really. Right. And also, it, it matters who your opponent is as well. Why so much? I just don't think Hoy is going to have, uh, he's not going to get paid off when he hits his hands as often. I mean, look at this is a perfect example. He flopped a top pair, he turned two pair, and Lewis might just get off here just with his original raise, just losing his original raise. Looks well, like he's making the call. He is, and it's maximum value. I mean, Dale bet that. the entire, you know, nearly the entire pot. Okay something in the 85% of the pot range on the river, that ends up being a fairly significant thing. Yeah, that was pretty big for, uh, for Dale. I, I think the bet size determined it for Toby for some reason. Dale might have thought, well, if I don't bet big, I'm not gonna get maximum value. And Toby thought, well, if he really wanted to get value, he would have bet smaller. I, right, I think, I think uh, Dale played that hand great. Look at Toby Lewis. Look how calm he is. Look how focused he is. He wouldn't guess it's the old 9-5 here. Just raise it up your standard. I think Hoy could either... I think shoving is fine, and I think calling is fine in this spot. Um, you raise. See, I'm really interested to, to see what Hoy would do if Lewis shoves here. It just looks like Hoy is re-raising enough to get off the hand if if uh, Lewis shoves. And he's just giving himself an opportunity to fold. And a hand as strong as King Jack, you just don't want to be put in a spot where you have to fold it. And Toby is good, definitely good enough to uh, to four-bet here some of the time and to get Hoy off the hand. Probably the last time he can do that as far as the stacks go, if you know what I mean. I'm all in. All in. Ooh. Toby shoves all in. Some heart this guy yeah, has. Yeah, th now this is a gamble. This is definitely a gamble. He reckoned, he knew, he reckoned that he was, I think, going to have to take a chance at some point in this heads-up match. Cool. And wow. Dale's made a good call. I'm not sure he, he decided that he was going to call if he shoved, but... Uh, you know, if he did, that's just, I guess it's a great play against someone like Toby Lewis, who's going to four bet jam 9 5 suited there. Dale Hoy, he's on the verge of the final table. I mean, this is a guy who has started playing poker on TV. He's now, this is the toughest heat he's ever had in one of these, and he's in. Took out Huck Seed, Toby Lewis, Taba Tabai, yeah, Phil Locke, the defending champion. It feels like a fairy tale story. It's incredible. He, you know, all those talented players that he had to beat in order to get where he is. It was definitely nothing short of a very tough heat. I might can get it. I can get the kids. <laughs> Toby Lewis goes into the runners-up heat, so a second chance to get to the final table. Frustrating for you, though. I can see it on your face. Yeah. yeah. Um, I might have been a little bit impatient when we were heads up, but um, I thought it was a good spot for him not not to have much of a hand and. Mm. Turned out like I didn't think he would call with King Jack to be fair, so 
uh, I probably got like his range wrong. Seriously, over the moon. I mean, like it was. Yeah. Um, I got myself in a good position like last night, and then came back this morning. And it was completely card dead for. Oh, it seemed forever. Oh. Um, but uh, we sort of just hung in there, and um, obviously was short that when we were three handed, and uh, it was just a case of it was boring really to watch. But I mean, it just it's the only thing you could do. I mean, yeah. to, uh, just get them in. We got lucky, um, and obviously uh, one with a the eights uh, which was the best hand and uh, all of a sudden it changed around so yeah well pleased to especially beat the field congratulations to dale hoy he takes the very first seat at our final table and for ept champion toby lewis he gets another chance to join him there through the runners up heat join us next time when some high stakes cash game players hit the table andrew roble roland de wolf and tom dwan kick things into overdrive here at the party poker world open six all good friends, but it's dog eat dog on the green felt here. <laughs> Big smile from Bro with really the wall. Gould looks like he's been hit by a freight train. Well, I cannot outplay you, but <laughs> occasionally I can maybe outpop you. I can't risk going bust because I gotta get even. <laughs> <laughs>